Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today I'm going to share the results on my seven-in-one fig tree. If you want to hopefully just quickly scan it, you may see within it we've got these tiger um, panache figs, we've got green figs, we've got brown figs, we've got a purple celestial fig, I've got the green isha fig, I've got a Chicago black hardy fig, and the most recent edition, a strawberry verite fig, a, a fig that actually tastes like strawberries. How cool and great is that? Before we get started, let me just share this quick quote that I selected, and if you have any cool quotes you'd like for me to share, I'd be happy to um, do so. Just feel free to write those in the comments. But this is a quote I got from David Hobson, and it goes as follows. I grow plants for many reasons, to pleasure my eye or to please my soul, to challenge the elements or to challenge my patience, for novelty or for nostalgia, but mostly for the joy of seeing them grow. And all of us have reasons for growing. I think it's a wonderful hobby, quite affordable, and one of my greatest passions is grafting and that's what really got me hooked into gardening and the whole experiences of planting and making things happen within a garden is grafting it does take time but when you do accomplish success it's extremely rewarding I want to share with you one of my pride and joys here in the garden in just a second but before we do I want to share with you my most recent graft making my once six in one fig tree and now seven in one fig tree with my most recent edition of the Strawberry Verite Fig, which was donated by my friend Cam, who lives out in Rancho Cucamonga. And he brought this container over to me, which is right here in this black container, which I've got elevated on my strawberry pot. And here you can take a look. The label reads, for those of you that want to see the spelling, Strawberry Verte, V-E-R-T-E. And what I did was I elevated the pot to a location where I can accomplish what's known as the approach graft. I'm not going to go through all the steps because I've done that so many times in the past. But right in here is an approach graft still attached to its own rootstock. It's only been about six to seven weeks since I accomplished this particular graft. I have since then notched it at this point. And what I'm going to do today, and I did the notch about two to three weeks ago, what I'm doing today is I am completely now severing the strawberry verite in its container away from what was what is now grafted onto the Chicago black hardy fig which is grafted at this point and then at this point down is my grandpa's green variety of fig which he picked up from somewhere like in Yugoslavia or Hungary about four decades ago and has been shared among all of our family members for all of these many many years but this was you know, a family fig, and I've since grafted onto it known, proven, quality figs on top of it. And again, I'm enjoying now seven varieties of figs in the space of just one fig. Figs in general grow quite large. There are smaller varieties such as blackjack that may grow to about eight to 10 feet instead of the typical 25 to 30 feet if left unmanaged. But again, through pruning, you can enjoy a fig like this one here to my right that is right now only measuring about, I'd say, 8 to 10 feet. And again, through selective pruning and, and, and management throughout the year, you can enjoy well over 100 to several hundred fruit on a tree under 10 feet tall, regardless of what kind of root it's resting on. So what we've done over here is this one here is now our strawberry verite. Um, this was accomplished by the approach grafting technique. And then over here on the top, I did another strawberry verite graft because a piece of it while I was doing the approach graft broke off. And I did what's known as the cleft graft. I'm going to give you some tips on both um, at the end of this video. And what happened over here is we got now more Chicago hardy black fig coming out because that's what it was grafted on. It's pushing out another branch. We're going to remove that off so that this branch could be trained into supporting this flavor of fig, being the strawberry verte. And now we've got the Chicago black hardy fig up and in this zone. You can see through ties, we're now training this branch to grow into this zone. The goal is every branch is in a zone where it's getting its own sunlight, where the leaves can capitalize on light to manufacture the sugars and the proteins and all the elements necessary for creating healthy quality figs. And the central zone will be the strawberry verte. And then over my right shoulder is the green isha variety of fig. 
let me share with you now some of the other fig varieties that I have here with and and then I'll share with you some of the products on how and what we're doing in regards to you know protecting and coating these plants what I have over here what I have over here are the tiger also known as the panache fig if you take a look at them they're typically yellow figs with green stripes and over here take a look at all of those figs it's pretty much every single leaf is supporting one fig so um, a lot of success over there if we come in a little further behind we can see these here are the kadota green figs right in this zone and on this side so the Kato so the kadota green fig if we come around back over here in this area we're supporting about another 15 to 20 of the brown turkey figs to my left here is also more brown turkey figs again since we've got two branches coming off in this zone so again every leaf a fig all the way up and then check out the uniqueness of this particular branch, which are the purple celestial figs. And if you take a look, they're more in the droop shape. They're very elongated. And what we're gonna do in the upcoming month or two is we're gonna do some taste testing as these become ripe so we can compare the flavors among all of them and, and basically see what they look like at maturity. Right now, most of these look green, but as they become more ripe, we'll get to enjoy the actual color of each of these fruit. So this one here is the purple celestial. As we come back over here, since I was grafting and pruning these back down, as I was trying to accomplish all of this, um, we don't experience as much fruit on this side, but we would have definitely had Chicago black hardy figs in this growing zone. But again, because of that grafting we did, we kind of held it back at least another month or two. But I'm proud to share that if you come in a little closer, we got the first hints of green Isha figs right here in this, in this um, growing zone over here. We hope to see more green ishas coming through. I hope to see the same thing in these notches as well in the upcoming few weeks with the Chicago Black Hardy and maybe, just maybe, we'll get to see some strawberry verite figs this year as well. So now we're going to quickly do is with all of the prunes that we just accomplished within it and if we also see any other wounds that are exposed, we're going to seal those now with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. The goal is that we're going to get protection from damaging sunburn insects and rodents. And here for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. Registered material for use in organic agriculture. The active ingredients in here include castor oil, cinnamon, cloves, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, spearmint, oils. And you can see over here on the lid, it protects newly installed plants and trees, shield, pruned, and damaged surfaces. And the goal is to simply take the product. I've already added water to it. We're simply just going to go with our paintbrush and again being that it's all organic we wouldn't do this with a chemical paint because the paint is ultimately going to find its way into the soil and contaminate all of the soil biology and paints designed to last for decades so you're going to have all of these compounds trapped in your soil for a very long period of time whereas this here being all organic is going to break down into its elements um, without compromising the the soil health if you come here and take the product we can now basically seal all of these wounds you can see here with the cleft graft that we got up above there's a little bit of exposure over here. Even though we coated it a few weeks ago, as it's expanding, we can continue filling these cracks to keep pests such as beetles and termites from entering those wounds, as well as the pruned and damaged surfaces um, from what was once this year being the black Chicago hardy fig. We've now better sealed that area as well. The last prune we just did together was at the very bottom over here of the um, strawberry verte. So we're just gonna just run the brush to the bottom of that as well. And again, we're just gonna look for other pruned um, and damaged surfaces throughout the plant. I see one that's catching my eye over here. Hopefully you can see this as well. If you take a look over here, the pith of the fig is very soft and will typically collapse. So figs have a very soft pith. The pith easily collapses and shortly in time, it'll typically collapse sometimes as much as a half an inch to a full inch down into the tree trunk, making a perfect place for the colonization of ants and other insects. So what we're gonna do here, this is one of the examples, if you can come in a little closer through these branches, you can see over here is the root stock. This here again is the original green fig from my grandfather. You can see that the pith of it, this again is a root stock, the grafted variety being the celestial purple is right here to my left. 
what I'm going to do is simply take this product, which I've, um, depending on how much water you add, if you fill up the can, you'll have a brush on solution. You can see over here the brush on directions. Over here is a foliar um, protection. You can add one to two teaspoons to a gallon of water to create a foliar spray to create a lighter plant to help in transplanting. And then lastly, if I can point out as well, is as a tree paste over here, or the tree paste direction, I got a little bit of white on there. Um, you can add a quarter cup of water. And this here, I did something in between tree paste and the brush on directions to create something of this consistency over here, which would be ideal for now filling in exposure such as this over here where there's a collapsed pit. And you can see I've got a nice consistency product for filling in that exposed pith and the entire grafting wound as well. And I can continue coating if there's any too much exposure of sun to any of the tree trunk. This would be a great application as the protection is also against damaging sunburn as well in the summer. It also offers insulation to the plant during the winter. So the hardest, sharpest freezes, the plant will also be protected through the method known as whitewashing. The last thing we're going to protect as well is our strawberry verite fig that we started off with. It was once grafted to the Chicago Black Hardy section of the graft. And again, remember, it's a graft on top of a graft on top of a graft. The, again, the strawberry verite fig is grafted onto the Chicago Black Hardy fig that's then grafted onto the green grandpa fig tree that we started off with. And now we've got the strawberry verite fig where we've got the exposed pruned branch which is right in this zone over here you can see the white pith that's there in the center of the plant what we're going to do is simply take our brush with the ivory organics product and we can now seal that tip as well to protect it from again disease as well as pests from potentially entering it if the entire trunk is exposed to too much light some of this is some drip ivory organics from when we applied it earlier but it would be a good practice to also coat and protect the entire trunk until the plant forms its own canopy to naturally shade and protect the underlying tree trunk, which I also define as being the heart of the plant. The heart of the tree being the most important part of the plant being the underlying tree trunk and the lower branches. So as long as this here is gonna be protected, the goal is we're gonna be able to have a plant that can regenerate more branches to give us an excellent, healthy, long lasting structure compared to having something that would be diseased very low down on the tree. As you can see, the plant, once we, once we first started out with it, was, again, Grandpa's fig tree that was about 15 to 20 feet tall. Some of you have, may have seen that video that I posted about two years ago um, called OMG, Why Cut the Giving Fig Tree? And the reason we did it, as you can now see two years later, is we're enjoying now seven varieties, or at least five varieties of figs are highly productive these branches being the most recently grafted, um, we hope to see maybe production later on this year, but we can guarantee production in this zone as well for a total of seven varieties of figs um, combined onto just one rootstock. So that's the reason for cutting the OMG Why Cut the Giving Fig Tree. What we're gonna do next and what we've been doing throughout the growing season as well is applying the Ivory Organic Six Macros Plus. This is the only fertilizer I've seen on the market that has everything plants need from nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. We all are familiar with NPK, but plants also need, and this is part of the macronutrients, the six macronutrients plants need, being magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. And you can see here the high um, organic percentages of the NPK being 13, 12, 13%, and then 1% magnesium, sulfur, and calcium, 3%, 3% as well. And it also contains the beneficial microbes and mycorrhiza. So um, what we're gonna do is, and what I've been doing on average every month or two, is just adding a few tablespoons around it. You can add a lot more, but there's more value in just adding the product around the root zone of the plant. So I'm just gonna add, that's one tablespoon, two. So I think I'm just gonna do about four. There's three and four. So I basically put product all around the growing zone and we're just going to mix that in to the top quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. The goal is just to get it into contact with the surface microbes and surface soil and 
that's it. And the next step is simply to water it down and that's gonna offer food and nutrition to the entire soil, soil biology as well as the plant obviously, by watering over the next on average 30 to up to 90 days. And let me share with you the difference between the six macros products. This one over here being the six macros plus. Here's your NPK value, 13, 12, 13, 1, 3, 3. And the ingredients, as you can see, are quite long. I'll try to read the first few lines, being feather meal, alfalfa meal, fishbone meal, kelp meal, cottonseed meal, potassium sulfate, glacial rock dust. Compare glacial rock dust to azomite, as some of you may know. Neem cake, rock phosphate, oyster shell, flour, crustacean meal, magnesium sulfate, humic acid, fulvic acid. These are acids that are derived from the natural compost, which help with the uptake of these macronutrients. Um, amino acid, silica powder, zeolite powder, compare that as well to azomite. And then all these glomus, which are beneficial bacteria and ben beneficial mycorrhiza to help also with the uptake and also support of the plant health. So we've got the super blend that we just um, applied to the fig tree. And then there's this product over here and it's available also in the 11.8 ounce size as well as the four pound size. And this one here is the premium blend with extra calcium. As you can see, the calcium on this one is 17% but the NPKs are a little bit lower. And if you compare the NPK um, from this product, it'll be very similar to a lot of the NPKs with a lower percentage um, that is available on most garden center shelves. And if you take a look at the ingredients on this one, you can see it's only two lines compared to the other one that's seven lines, derived from feather meal, bird guano, calcium sulfate, calcium rock phosphate, molasses, alfalfa meal, fishbone meal, kelp meal, condensate meal, potassium sulfate, glacial rock dust, neem cake meal, and it's also got 1% of the six macros plus super blend. And you can see it's got, again, all of the macronutrients and a lot of the micronutrients, um, as well as the beneficial microbes and mycorrhiza as well. So again, the premium and the super blend fertilizers. I know that the first few stores to offer the fertilizer blends include um, Amazon as well as Walmart and Sears and there may be a couple other dot coms that are now making this available um, But it's predominantly the three-in-one plant guards and the whitewash formulas and the ready-to-use sprays Available by Ivory Organics that can be found in about 50 retail stores across the country a lot easier to find But if you have any questions feel free to write us in the comments below and we'll be happy to get back to you So I'm hoping you share the excitement and the enthusiasm with creating such a marvelous success here within the garden. Hope you guys are trying it at home. And again, if you have any um, helpful gardening quotes you'd love to share with us, please write us in the comment below. I'd love to um, hear from them. And if it's one that we choose, it'll be shared in the upcoming video. And I'll be sure to give you guys credit as well for sharing your favorite quotes with us. So if you've enjoyed this educational video by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational videos. And be sure not to miss out on that push bell notification so you get our notices as soon as they become released and available. Well, thanks again for watching and happy gardening.